Okay, which didn't do any good. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I had, yeah, okay. It didn't do any good. Okay. Uh, we went to Central Psych at the University of Cincinnati for counseling. He refused to go, but it did yeah. help us, and they're the ones that recommended okay. uh, kids helping kids. And he also had a druggy friend in the program. Yeah. And I talked to his mother. And and Mary, I have to I have to go, but I really appreciate your call. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Uh, we're going to return in just a moment at 381-1530 on WCKY. What do you want to know about this program? What do you want to know from Ben Clark or Chris Reed? A uh, question or comment from you. You've been listening in for a while. You've heard from a couple of satisfied customers as well. And if you'd like to be part of this conversation at 381-1530, it's all yours. Mm -hmm. I was still in Motivational development right now, though, talking about kids helping kids. It is uh, it's a peer-based, peer pressure-based program, isn't it? Other it, Kids helping kids implies that people just like yourself help kids who've already gone through the, the program. You guys both are graduates from the program. It's, it's not just the staff. Uh, it's not just the staff that uh, help the kids or the kids helping kids sort of thing. Uh, uh, when I was in the program, I earned the privilege to live at home after a couple months. And then I took a child home with me that was new in the program. And while I was at home, I was talking with my mother and talking about all past experiences and bringing up the kind of feelings that I had had and working on communication skills with my family. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I did that, the person that was new in the program was observing that, and he was learning from, by example. Mm -hmm. uh, and as he watched that, he learned you know, how to do that when he got ready to go home. Um, so, you know, the, the kids helping kids. And then uh, later on, I had even more kids in my house. And sometimes I had foster kids that come in from out of town. Mm -hmm. We take kids from uh, various cities in the area. Um, and they'll live in a foster home. They lived in my home for a while. They go to school here in Cincinnati. I'd say they're from Columbus, Lexington, or Louisville, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, later on in the program, I, like, there's, there's various phases. On second phase, I lived at home. On third phase, I'd go back to school. Mm -hmm. and on fourth phase, I earned some time off and some new privileges. Did you uh, complete your education? Yeah, well, and while in the program, I uh, uh, I didn't go back to high school um, while I was in the program. I, I got the privilege to go to uh, the University of Cincinnati. The dean at Raymond Walters College accepted me to go there. Okay. Um, and then all of the kids that they'd go through the program, when they get on third phase, uh, if they're over 18, they've graduated from high school, or they're under 18, um, they need to go back to school or work. Uh, kids over 18 are out of school. They'll go back to either college or to find a job, um, or both. Some kids, mm -hmm. as long as they don't spend more than 40 hours a week outside a group. Okay. And then kids that are under 18 and go in high school, they'll go to school all morning and then come to the program afterwards on third day. Okay. Uh, Let's talk with some more of the folks here. And Lynn, you've been very patient with us. Good morning. I would just like to know uh, how you deal with somebody that won't admit they have a problem, and you can see it uh, very uh, clearly, and they won't talk about it or ever admit that they even have a problem, and, and how do you even begin to get them help? Um, my first advice, I would, uh, and your, your name is Lynn? Yes. Okay. Um, Lynn, when I was, when my mother was uh, talking with me about my problem, I, I tell you, I, I don't, I didn't talk as freely then as I do now. Um, I was very violent, verbally abusive. I would, I would cuss at her and tell her that she didn't know what she was talking about, and I really didn't have a problem. And, you know, I would sort of show her by actions uh, and behavior that I did have a problem, but in my words, I would con my way out of it. Uh, and how my mother found me help is um, she went and talked to, to the program before she even talked to me. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I never even heard about the program until after I was already in the building uh, because I didn't want help. I didn't think I needed help. Um, and I was really fighting a battle inside of myself. And I wasn't about to admit to myself that I needed help, much less if somebody intervened and tried to get me to admit to them that I needed help. And I, had, I needed to be under the influence of kids that were going through treatment before I could realize just what I needed and just how much I needed to uh, well, you, you mean they like tricked me into going into the meeting or what? Yeah, yes, yeah, she did. Um, she told me that I was going to some place and I was going to have the car for the rest of the day. And um, I, uh, I went into the building and I sat in a room and there were two guys standing there and they said, do you know where you are? And I said, well, uh, I guess not. And they talked to me for a few minutes and they confronted me and did sort of an intervention with confronting me with all my past behaviors and uh, all the violence I had activities that I'd gotten in with my mother and family and people around me, the, the jobs I didn't hold, the money I'd been stealing, the trouble I'd gotten in with the police. And realizing all those consequences, I never wanted to look at them. And they were sort of, uh, uh, you know, confronting me with those, putting up in front of me, making me look at them. And they weren't doing it in a mean way. They cared about me very much. And they were just like, this is happening to your life. You know, what are you going to do about it? Um, you know, we're really concerned about you. Your mother's come here for help. And it took me about four hours before I signed in uh, the program. I mean, you, you can't be enlisted or can you be enlisted 
against your will. You certainly can. That's, that's only one way to get your child into treatment. You don't have to lie to them. Um, you know, my mother chose to do that because I was really deceptive to her, and she figured one small deception to me to help me the rest of my life was worth it. Um, there are, can, can you be a sign? Can a parent enroll them in this kind of a program? You certainly can. If they don't, even if they don't want to be there? Yeah, I didn't want to be there uh, um, at first. You know, the first day I didn't want to be there. I, the only reason I signed in is because they told me that the police were going to uh, take me to the youth commission, you know. Um, but there are, you can talk to the, like if your child's in trouble with the police in particular, you can talk to his probation officer. And uh, the general community, uh, especially in the probation departments, are becoming more and more educated on, on substance abuse and chemical dependency. And what uh, they, they understand the treatment centers that are available. And you can ask that probation officer to ask the, ref, the referee or the judge to make a placement with your child, and he can make a placement and, and like, court order him to kids helping kids. Well, Lynn, Lynn, has your child's behavior attracted the attention of the uh, law enforcement community yet? No, because she, uh, she really uh, does this mostly at home. Uh, she doesn't go out and uh, get in a lot of trouble. It's more like an escape. What kind of gross drugs do you know that she's using? I don't know. I'm not, I don't know a lot about it. It's, um... Why do you assume that she is? Oh... I think she she uh, smokes marijuana because I can smell it sometimes, and then I know she drinks beer. Usually, um, by that time, when my mother knew that I was using drugs, there was a lot of other drugs that I was using. Um, when I first started using Isn't marijuana, that unusual though to do that at home. Um, not really. I would do it just about anywhere. When I began to get careless with marijuana and alcohol, uh, the other drugs that I was using were uh, a lot more intense. I started experimenting with uh, quaaludes, a lot of pills, hash, hash oil. Um, things like that. What I was doing was, um, you know, I began to get sloppy with my drug use. And by the time my mother was catching me with marijuana and alcohol, I wasn't covering it up anymore. It wasn't a big deal to me that I was using marijuana and alcohol because it was just a, you know, an everyday drug. It wasn't a, on a weekend drug. You know, it wasn't a real thrill. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty much like it. Yeah. How uh, do you, does it affect her life, the quality of her life, and yours yet? Oh yes, because she's just not getting anywhere. Uh, she has a, a job that she can hold. How old is she? Uh, 19. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's just, it's a, you know, no future, and yeah. she just doesn't seem to have ambition. At 19, there's very little that a parent can do to intervene directly. There, there are lots that parents can do even when kids are beyond uh, the age of 18. Um, in seeking assessment, coming to the program and talking to some of, some of the clinical staff. Do you get pay people, the girls, guys that old in sure, the program? We, we take kids from age 12 to 21, um, and they can be court-ordered at any time up until they're, they're 21 years old. Um, we've had kids find themselves in at 19 knowing that they have a problem. Their parents had talked to them about it, confronted them with some of the consequences of their drug use. The child uh, inside felt guilty about it. You know, and said, okay, I do need help, and it would come with their parent to the program. Is the drug abuse a symptom, or is it a cause, or does that make any difference? Um, dr drug abuse is treated as a disease, and the disease is primary. Uh, it's the first and foremost problem um, is, is the drug use. Uh, you can get into all kinds of reasons of causality, but that doesn't really help in treatment. Uh, you waste a lot of time trying to figure out what caused yeah. it. Who, who, uh, yeah, you get into your belly button doesn't fix the drug problem. Right. Uh, okay. So, Lynn, I hope that have, helps out a little bit. Yes. Uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, I don't mean to cut you off. Do you have any specific no. questions? There's, there's a telephone number I'd like uh, maybe you to take down or everyone else to hear about. Okay, uh, thank you, Lynn. All right. Now, you grab the, uh, the paper and pencil, and we'll give you a phone number here in just a few moments. If you'd like to join this conversation, you can. This is uh, uh, a subject that has to plague the brain of parents everywhere, wondering if your kid is or is not into drugs and how to avoid the whole problem and when it does occur, how to intervene. Kids Helping Kids is a program that intervenes and has a pretty good success rate. I'm going to give you a, a phone number in just a little bit as well. With question or comment, though, you can interrupt in just a moment on Info Radio WCKY. Hi, I'm Johnny Bench for Fifth Third Bank. If you're like me, you've heard a lot of confusing news about the... Studio with the Ben Clark and Chris Reed from Kids Helping Kids. A quick number, a telephone number, if people want to get involved in some way or call you folks. 689 Kids. 689 Kids. 689 Okay. All right. Let's um, talk to Gus. Good morning, Gus. Good morning. Um, I was trying to respond to your question what can you do as a parent to prevent the situation? Yeah. And I think the basic situation is that we can set, we can influence our kids by what we say. And there are, uh, but we can't control them. So 
for you need to be 